Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to try to do a going for lessons vlog. I'm going out to my coaches today and I'm bringing two horses for lessons and I'm bringing two more to ride because they're right next door to the public riding club. And if I'm hauling over an hour anyway, I wanted to try to make it a little more worthwhile. So I'm going to try to vlog along. I'm just leaving from the barn now at 7.30 and I don't ride till 11. Yeah, 11, but my trailer's a bit of a mess and I have to pack it and get everything ready. So I will see you guys at the barn. Hey everyone, so I'm at the bar now. I've got all the stuff I need out of my tack room. You can see saddles in the back and sheepskin. I got my grooming tote and I'm here at the trailer and it's just started raining a little bit, which we knew was probably going to happen today. Um, it's just drizzling so hopefully it clears up, but my coaches have an indoor, but I'm still bringing the other two horses to ride. Um, so hopefully it won't get too wet. And now I have about half an hour before uh, my other half gets here to hook up the trailer and then about an hour total before I leave. And my gray horse is filthy. So I guess I'd better get a move on. I have about half an hour to get the trailer organized.
Yes. And of course, nobody's on this half of the pen in either of those shelters. Everyone is far away. You guys have three shelters. And six of you are in the same one. You little stinkers. So that's Baby Boo. Hi, Baby Boo. You're too little for adventures. Apollo is coming. Flash is coming. Striker's coming. And Niggy in the back behind Flash, you probably can't see her because Apollo says he's going to meet a star. So I have all four halters with me because I'm insane and I won't be able to film walking back. Yeah, hi. You want to come so bad. But, uh, oh, Flash is ready. <laughs> Boo. I will see you guys when we're loading. One. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, get out of my halter pile. Yo, yo, stinker. Two, ah, ah, ah. And <laughs> I probably won't have hands to do three and four, but there's three and four. Okay, one, two, three, and four. See, madness. <laughs>
Oh, he did it. Good boy. Oh, hand time. Good. So good. All right. Okay, so we're driving now. We're about 20 minutes late leaving, um, but that's pretty good. I allow myself like way too much time usually when hauling for lessons and shows, so we will be fine. It's five to 10 now. I don't ride till 11 and we're about 40, 45 minutes away. So it'll be a bit of a quick tack up, but we'll try to keep vlogging and not fail at vlogging like usual. Okay, we just finished riding Striker. I wasn't able to really vlog grooming and tucking him up because we got a little tight for time and unloading the green horses. Um, it got a little exciting for a minute there. So he's all finished, um, which is great. I've got Nikki and Apollo and Flash here and I'm just gonna groom and tuck up Flash. I uh, have some time because there's a group in between my lesson and his lesson, so. I will try to film some of him getting ready.
portion of the video I decided to do a bit of a voiceover to let you guys know what I'm doing to help Apollo have a successful ride off property. It is his first time ever being ridden off property. He's less than 10 rides under saddle when this video was taken, which was a little bit ago. And uh, I'm just making sure I can get his focus, get his attention. I'm just doing a little bit of groundwork, doing direction changes. Um, but not being too harsh with him, you can see when he looks around, I'm still giving him a bit of a chance. But when he gets so distracted that he stops listening, I start increasing the rate and frequency of the changes of direction. So there I lose him a little bit and so I had to actually give him a little bit of a tap just to get his attention. And then you can see I come back and start changing directions right away to make sure he stays focused on me. There was a lot of things going on, a lot of things for him to look at, a lot of rigs coming and going. There was a trail class clinic going on in one of the arenas at the riding club. Lots of horses coming and going and lots of trailers coming and going. And you can see the cattle in the background. He's never seen or been exposed to cattle. And at one point in the video, they'll start moving from one pasture to the next. And he actually handled it really, really well considering. Um, plus, he's calling out to his friends who are still at the trailer. I'm just carrying on with my groundwork and I'm asking him to stop and he gave me a pretty good stop and I didn't film all of it but I, I made sure my cues were pretty well received uh, here is the first time trying to mount him so you can see I just have a lead rope on I don't have my reins attached and the reason for that is if I need to hop back off if he moves I have the whole rope to control him instead of trying to finagle a pair of reins and there I got halfway up and he didn't move uh, I don't really count readjusting for balance as moving. Um, one foot's allowed to move to square up, I don't mind that. But I didn't swing all the way on, I ended that and got off to let him know that standing still was what I wanted. And then here I got all the way on and he didn't move. He took a partial step backwards because he bent in half to reach the tree. Uh, there he dove his head. So he called to his friends and he's being a little bit sassy. He's just telling me that he would rather be over with his friends doing his own thing. So I just gave him a bit of a moment. I was trying to assess the behavior a little bit and figure out, you know, was he going to escalate and get dangerous? And I determined that I was pretty confident he wasn't going to. So here you can see he's just kind of testing it a little bit. He says, I don't really want to listen to you. I want to go back to my friends and I don't want to do that. And uh, that's okay. There's no need to get after a horse for that. Um, I just go back to focusing on getting him to relax and refocus on me rather than worry about what's going on outside the rings. So there we're passing the gate and you can see he kind of does it again. Like, no, I'd rather not go. So I just kind of let him stop for a tick. again same deal so it's not a form of intimidation it's not a learned anything because he hasn't been under saddle he's just kind of playing up a little letting me know he wants to go play over there and he doesn't want to be in here being quiet and calm and focused but that is just too bad so here I kind of started incorporating the cones into my little ride um, you can see the cattle moving from one pasture to the next in the background there he handled that very well and uh, it's nice to have the cones there. I didn't set them up, but they were there. And sometimes it's nice to have a little obstacle set up when you're riding a really new green horse so that you have something to focus on that isn't maybe so intensely them. So we can all be guilty of kind of over-focusing on the horse, and that can make them a little bit uptight. So here I'm just kind of messing around with the cones, weaving in and out. You can see he's starting to relax and come down between calling for his friends. And any time he kind of softens like that, you'll see quite a big loop in my rein. Here I'm just asking him to stop. And you'll see me get off. And the reason I get off is when I'm starting a young horse or having a really new experience for any horse, uh, I like to do it in stages. So five or six small rides is better for me than one big ride because if he messes anything up in the subsequent rides, 
you'll still have positive rides to fall back on. So if you do one big ride and teach him a whole bunch of stuff and then he kind of falls apart at the end and has a terrible experience, you're going to end up erasing a lot of that stuff that you were working on before. If you're having a good experience, even if it starts out bad and it gets a bit better, and you get off, you've ended that ride, and you give him a little break, and you let that solidify, you let him think about it, and then you get back on, and if he has an explosion in the second ride, <laughs> he's not going to erase as badly the stuff he learned in the first. So I think in this video I get off and on three or four times, and that's not even all the times I did it, because I didn't want this video to be like three hours. I also never punish my horses for calling out. Uh, it can definitely get really annoying, especially when they scream it in your face. But it's just kind of a fact of life and you've got to get them more reassured that you're going to take care of them and that you two can be a herd away from the other herd. And uh, just focus on relaxation and softness and that kind of stuff will just cease. Here you can see me starting another ride. Um, it didn't film me getting off. but. Here's me getting back on. And you'll see in the video, I think, I get on him from both sides. So I do mount him from the left and the right. Uh, I do believe that every young horse should be able to do each thing from each side. Now, there's always excuses. I'm definitely weaker mounting from the right because I spent many years in pony club mounting only from the left. And I also have an old right knee injury from hurting it really badly playing polo. Um, so it's definitely something I have to work out, but there is no excuse. You should do it on both sides. Here is his first ever trot off property, and <laughs> you can see he has a little bout of sass there. And I just get him moving softly forward again, and then back into trot. You don't want to give him a big boot and get after him and make the situation escalate. If you were worried your horse was going to buck, which I'm not here, he's just kind of diving his head and doing this whatever behavior you want to call it. Um, the best thing you can do is send them forward. So here I was only going to do one trot from the other side back to this side, um, but then he kind of dunked his head and let me know his opinion, which I don't care for when we're riding. So we went back and then he did his sassy bows again two times. So now we're going again. Now had he been good on the first round, we would have only done one pass. Now this is our third pass. And as you can see, he doesn't give me his opinion, and he doesn't give me sass near the gate. So I give him a good scratch, and then I got off, and that was ending the session, period. There was no ride after this. I did let him graze a bit. There was some alfalfa growing on the side. Hi. to the barn and I just turned everyone out and the two that got left behind are very happy and that's baby boo well wrong way baby boo is that horse and then this is diamond she just turned three uh, she's next in line to be started but it hasn't quite happened yet because we've been busy with Apollo and Nikki so and my lessons went okay. Stryker's lesson was good. I'm pretty disappointed in Flash's lesson. Um, I feel like it was only really half a lesson because the girl there was having trouble with her horse and didn't really seem like she wanted to ride through any of the trouble. And the coach ended up getting on and riding her horse. And I feel like it maybe took up a little more time than two riders. Splitting time would usually have taken, so. Uh, yeah. I'm remembering to do my outro again, and I'm pretty much done for right now. Oh, there goes Flash rolling in the mud. Oh yeah. Nice and dirty. <laughs> and here's Boo, she's so mad. 
um, does not understand why we keep leaving her behind. Because you're just a baby. You're just a whale baby. Look at Look at your hay extension. Is that? Oh, so pretty. So pretty. I guess we're rambling now. Oh, there goes Nikki too. It's mud roll time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yuck! Oh, he's going for a third. Oh man, he's gonna be brushing forever. You guys are gross. So gross. <laughs> he says, "I'm not gross. You should have taken me, cause I'm the best." Um, this horse is actually the gray horse Striker. He's my big gray horse that I was riding today. This is his niece. So his half-brother is a stallion, and that's this horse's dad. And they're the same breed. Striker is Iberian warm blood, so half Andalusian, half thoroughbred. And that's what this little thing is. Also half Andalusian, half thoroughbred. Oh, guess who else is about to get gross? Guess who, everybody? Gotta find that perfect spot. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and filthy. He's a very vocal roller. <laughs> Gotta get, make sure all that gray is brown. We can't have any gray. We don't want people to think we're a gray horse. We're gonna be chestnuts or bays. And that's disgusting. Hi, Paulo. Disgusting. Baby Boo is still here. Like, bring that trailer back around. It's clearly time for my adventure because I'm the best. You gotta rub your nose. You're pretty cute. You're pretty cute. So thanks for tuning in. I know this vlog is very long. I haven't edited yet, but I can tell it's going to be quite long. And that's just kind of how it happens when you ride four horses and travel around, I guess. Um, I don't know if... <laughs> Greeting. If it's a better idea for me to like break kind of each thing apart and do more edits. Um, every time I look at other people's YouTube channels, like day by day and stuff, and they ask if people like long vlogs or shorter, everyone's like, long! So, I guess by that accord, this channel should be doing way better. Because we ramble forever. Right, boo? So, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know if there's any suggestions you have to make things you know, more interesting or better or something you've come back and watched. Thanks.